Hi, everybody. This is Hondo Carpenter from the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. As you know, I am your Las Vegas Raiders beat writer for Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. Thank you for joining us today. Always love the opportunity to sit down and just chat with you and 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 talk Raiders. We have a lot to talk about today. We're going to be doing some more of your email as well as addressing certain topics of some things that have gone on, answering some specific questions. So it's going to be very detailed today, and I hope that you enjoy it. So let's kick it off and get right into it. The first one comes to us, and I had several like this, and so I just picked the first one to come in. Uncle Hondo, there is a lady who is a return attorney reporting that John Jenkins is coming back uh, to the Raiders, haven't seen you report it. Do you have any thoughts? This, uh, and this is from, uh, thank you, Uncle Hondo. I know I can trust you to answer it. Carlos, Carlos, uh, let me just share this. I'm, I'm familiar with the person who made the report, and I think she is reputable. I, however, have not been able to confirm it. So that's why I haven't reported it as of yet. But I think they're reputable, and it would not shock me. That's a guy that I think that they wanted back, but I just haven't been able to confirm the reports so why we haven't reported it. And it was a Saturday night. So there you go. Uh, next one comes in from Zach. Zach says, Hondo, I have a question for you. When Tyree Wilson and Will Anderson were coming out in the draft, you said the consensus was that Will Anderson had the better immediate upside but Tyree had the longer term, um, the longer term upside. <clears throat> Is that still the case? How do you think it's going? And again, this comes from Zach S. Zach, great question. That's absolutely the truth. Will Anderson had the immediate, excuse me, impact. That's why you remember if you go back and look, and this is what I love about the digital age, is everything is out there and it stays out there. I talked about I really like Tyree, but because of the injury, you knew he was a year away from even being himself and that Will Anderson had the more immediate impact. So if I had had a pick, I would have picked Will. But if I didn't have a choice because I thought Will would go off the board, I would have taken Tyree. So, yeah, I totally – that's nothing changed. It's completely accurate. And I can tell you – Tyree is very close to 100% now, which they expected a full year for recovery. Now he's got to, you know, get all of that body, you know, where it needs to be. But he's been doing great. He's working hard. Um, that's of the last report I had, which was a few weeks ago. That was Super Bowl week. But um, so it's the last time I asked. But doing well, working hard. And has impressed a lot of people. He's going to be different this year. And I thought at the end of last year, he was already showing flashes and doing tremendously well. But that's where it sits right now. Okay, the next one comes to us and says, Hondo, are we to believe, because the Raiders have yet to trade up for a high pick, that that's something that's out of the question? I'd love to hear some thoughts on this. This is some why, Thomas. Why, period, Thomas. Why is the initial name? Um, why Thomas? Why, first of all, um, I wouldn't assume anything in the NFL. You know what that happens when you assume you make an ass of you and me. I have said to you multiple times, and I reiterate it that if you're not going up to one, then you wait and make a draft decision on draft night after somebody drops. But if you're not going up to one, there are so much so many moving parts in this draft, especially that you don't um, go anywhere else. Now, if there are three guys that you like equally, then you can go to three, but we know two is not available and I'm hearing three is not it either. So, and there was a time they could have traded for one. That's not, I don't believe out there anymore. Three, one is no longer available is what I was told this morning. Uh, so that's where you stand. The three first picks are going to go quarterbacks. So if you if if you like four quarterbacks and you can trade to four, whatever. But that's kind of how the whole thing is kind of parlaying out. And again, I think we're going to see picks in the first 12 
that don't have first 12 grades, it's going to force even more talent down the Raiders' throat. I mean, it's a great spot for the Raiders to be in. Raiders are in a super, super good spot. Um, Next one comes in, and I found this one to be funny. I liked it, and it was funny. Uncle Hondo, love reading all your articles and watching the podcast, but I have a question about the draft. Your last mock draft was sensational, and I loved it. I loved getting the offensive lineman from Penn State. Do you think it's possible that the Raiders are thinking about building this way? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. That comes from Stephen Stephen T. Yes, Stephen, absolutely I do. And that's why I said it, because that's what they've talked about, is that mentality of how you build a team. And so 100%, 100%. Now, uh, okay, next one goes in, says, Dear Uncle Hondo, any chance that the Raiders will be signing any more free agents? And that comes to us from Ann. And Ann's last name is C, Ann C. And yes, now I want to remind you, I told you yesterday there were some offers on the table to free agents, both on the team, I mean, formerly on the team, and guys from other teams. That still stands. And as those players check out the market, and maybe and they weigh, where do I want to live? Maybe they're already here, and they say, you know, I'd like to stay there. I, I, I very much like Antonio. I know that played huge into Adam Butler, who loves Patrick Gam, Graham, loves Antonio. I know John Jenkins shares that. And again, I'm not reporting Jenkins as we've confirmed it, but I believe it just on things I knew. And then, of course, the person that reported it uh, to me is reputable and credible, incredible and credible, not incredible. I don't know them. Um, but I know some others, too, that that, that want to be there. So, yes, I, I think there's going to be plenty more free agents. I don't think one at all. I think there's going to be plenty more. But, again, you have to – if you do free agency right, then you're getting guys at your price. You're getting guys at what you feel like. And if you make – so let's go to Adam Butler. Okay, the Raiders made him – remember I told you they're going to be frugal but not cheap. If you're worth 10, they'll offer 10, not 10, 5. Here's where this goes. They knew what they thought Adam Butler's value was. And they didn't try to lowball him. They made him the offer. Okay. He goes out and looks, sees other teams are interested, and there was definitely an interest in him. And the what I was told was that only one team offered more, but it wasn't enough that made uprooting your family and being gone when he wanted to play for AP, wanted to play for Patrick Graham, and there were other offers, but that wasn't at the same amount of the Raiders, that the Raiders priced it right. This is where he wanted to be, loved the franchise, loved the coaches, loved the direction, says, I want to stay. So that is, that's exactly where the process is right now. And I will tell you, same thing with Christian Wilkins. They made him his offer at what they thought his value was. And he took it. He took it. Um. I really like this question, by the way. This question comes in and says, Hondo, I love the John Jenkins hiring. think it's super good. What part of his story isn't being talked about? Why do you think the Dolphins, as good as he is, did not resign him? Resign him? That comes from Pat N. Pat N. This is a great one, Pat. So the Dolphins threw a ton of money at him last offseason. And he bet on himself. He bet on himself. And so they wanted him desperately. And it paid off. He got the money from the Raiders. That's the kind of guy you want. You want a guy that just bets on himself. Okay, I'm willing to play out the last year of my deal. Because I know at the level I'm going to play. I always laugh at guys. Well, I'm not going to play the last year of my deal. Why? Okay, let's go back to Josh McDaniels. I mean, Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, 
I said I didn't think the Raiders should ex execute the execute the fifth year option, and they didn't. I supported that. So in his fourth year, he was stunning. So they franchise him. And last year, he was injured a lot and didn't play at the level he needed to play. I like guys who bet on themselves and then produce. I love that. And I, I think that that's kind of the part of the Wilkins story that maybe a lot of fans have not realized or been reticent of. Is that he um, bet on himself. Now, this next email I find very, very funny. And I'm going to share this with you just kind of let you behind the curtain. As you know, I have reported to you multiple times that the Raiders have kicked the tires on a few trades. And there was one involving a particular superstar that I know they'd kick the tires on. I've also said multiple times after every time I've talked about it, nothing imminent. Anything could happen. So people can go and say, Hondo said this, Hondo said that. And I just blow them off. Because if you're not going to listen, I'm, I'm not going to answer. So I've got a lot of people, hey, where's this big trade you said was coming? Well, never said one. I said they kicked the tires on it, but nothing was imminent. And I'm not mad at all. I just mute. Um, but I'm answering this question because I thought it was legitimate. Hondo, I heard that you, you talked many, many times about the Raiders kicking tires on trade, including one with a superstar. I also know you made it clear nothing was imminent. I'm just wondering, do you believe any that trade with a superstar still has potential? Yeah, I do. I do. I think some things have to happen to make it happen. Nothing's imminent. But yeah, I do think it's still there. The player is still on the team, still at a place of need. And um, absolutely. But again, nothing imminent. They've checked on it. They've done their due diligence. And I think that's important. That is one thing that has really impressed me with Tom Telesco a lot. A lot. Is <clears throat> he is very thorough. And I have been impressed hearing from NFL teams. Yeah, we heard from the Raiders or yeah, this or yeah, that. I, I thought that has been um, very fascinating to me. Very, very fascinating to me. And uh, I, I have been pleasantly surprised. I knew he was a good general manager. I knew the things that he did not have control over in Los Angeles that people beat him over the head for. I get that. Um, but I also have been very, very impressed with how thorough he is. Next one. Um, I found this one to be really, really interesting. That's why I picked it. And uh, I'll just read it to you. Hondo, when I read your last mock draft, I was really surprised to see Spencer Rattler going to the Raiders in the second round. Can you tell me what it is about that decision? I know you said you're listening to NFL executives, but can you tell me what goes into that? I would love to hear this. I'm fascinated by Rattler. I think he has a, the upside to be great and a downsize to be terrible. But with that much upside, I like him in the second round. And that comes to us from John uh, H., and John H. lives in Miami, Oklahoma. Um, John, thanks. Uh, yeah, so the Raiders have done a lot of due diligence on Spencer Rattler. Now, they have on several of them. In the mock draft that I did last week, Michael Penix wasn't available in the second round of the Raiders. Now, many of you have heard me say what I'm about to say, but I'm going to reiterate it again. If Michael Penix didn't have the injury history that he does, he would be a first rounder. But the problem is, is good drafting teams understand I can't take risks in the first round. I mean, every pick in the first round is a risk, but you have to mitigate risk as much as possible in the first round because the pick is too valuable, far too valuable. Now, if he had had an injury history at, let's say, three knee surgeries, but it was all the same knee, it is very viable that maybe the first surgeon didn't clean it up enough, so he had to go in and get a second. And then because of a second injury, uh, surgery, there had to go back and do a third to clean up scar tissue. So a lot of people would say, oh, three surgeries on one knee, but it was really only one. 
And because not as much was done in the first, you got to go back and clean up scar tissue. That's not as big of a red flag as multiple injuries to multiple different places. So again, um, I would believe if Penix was there in the second and, and Rattler, the Raiders would have went with Penix, but in that draft, uh, Penix was not available. Now I will tell you about Spencer. He has intrigued a ton of people. He goes to Oklahoma and then the Oklahoma coaches make some, um, what I have been told were promises to Caleb Williams. He, and he leaves and he goes to South Carolina and does very, very well. Um, but what I was told really impressed people was in the interviews at the combine, um, Spencer um, was very complimentary to his coaching staff at Oklahoma. He he said not one ill word about Caleb Williams, and it really impressed people, the teammate that he was. And these are guys that, I mean, Lincoln went on to USC, Caleb went on to USC. Um, but no bitterness, no anger, just about, you know, what he's doing in the NFL, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I thought that was um, Spencer's play impressed people, but his interviews did even more. Uh, Spencer's a guy that, like Penix, two salt of the earth, good people. Either one, I think this franchise would be better for having on the roster. So yeah, I like I like both of those guys. And uh, thank you for asking about that. Then we come to um, this one. Hondo, my name is Rhonda. I live in California. Excuse me. My father, before he passed away, was a very big Raider fan. My mom is a very big Raider fan. And we watched all of the Raider games because it reminds us of dad. I like to listen to your podcast because it's clean. And mom says I can listen to it because it's clean. My question is when you talk about things like the word line to gain, for those of us who don't know what that means, can you please explain? I'm only 10 and I know that a lot of girls don't like football, but I do. Can you explain to me what the term line to gain is? I appreciate it. And I appreciate you having a podcast that I can listen to that my mom says is a okay. Thank you. And then she also says, I love when your wife says Raiders. So Rhonda, first of all, I want to just tell you something. I showed your email to my wife, Shannon, and she loved it. And so um, I want you to know that Shannon's going to send you a gift package. And she's going to send you some Raider clothes for girls that you're going to love, the ones that she likes to wear. So I thought that was really cool of Shannon. But also there's a special gift in an envelope in the package. Now your mama knows what it is, but I want you to know that Shannon and I are looking forward to meeting you. And you'll know what I mean when it gets to the envelope. And we look forward to meeting you and saying hi to you. So thank you so much, Rhonda, for answering. I want to have a podcast that everybody can listen to that everyone feels like I can go and get something from. So thank you, Rhonda, and tell your mama thank you. And I am sure that your father is so incredibly proud of you. And thank you for sharing some of those memories about your dad. That made me so happy. Being a dad is great. And Rhonda, I'm going to tell you, I bet your dad if you would have asked him when he was alive, dad, what are you most proud of? I bet he would have told you being your mama's husband and your dad. Any guy, Rhonda, would be thrilled for you to be their daddy. And so you need to remember that he loved you very, very, very much. And he's proud of his little girl. And you picked a good team to be a fan of. There are a lot of really good Raider people a lot of wonderful Raider people. And when you get your package, which will probably be there Tuesday, and you read the letter from Miss Shannon, and you look at what's in the envelope, she's going to introduce you to some of them. Okay? 
So I appreciate you, Rhonda. Thank you for answering. Thank you, Mama, for letting her. And Rhonda, I want you to know you're going to be in our prayers. And we're grateful for you. Don't you ever let daddy's memory die. You keep him up here in your mind all the time. We're coming up on 10 years ago that my dad died. And he was a great dad. So I know what you're feeling. And, uh, but man, he had a great, you're probably a lot better daughter than I am a son. But you keep being you, Rhonda. We're proud of you, princess. All right, here we go. Next. <clears throat> Hondo, do you feel like there's a chance that Josh Jacobs and Hunter Renfro will do well at their next team? I'm still struggling to put my arms around this one. I'm just struggling to put it all together inside my mind. It isn't making sense. This is some Austin and Austin B. Um, first of all, I do. I totally do. Josh Jacobs is extremely talented. And you saw when he played on his fourth year deal, how he could play. The issue with him is ability has to um, has to be availability. That's what it has to be. Has to be. Absolutely has to be. And then Hunter Renfro, um, I totally uh, think he can be. He's a slot receiver. He has a very detailed role, but I think he can still absolutely be successful in this league. I do. I think the 100-year catch, the 100-season catch, everybody – um. Everybody, um, you know, got injured. So I think that was a little bit more of a unicorn, but I think he absolutely has the ability to be successful. Hold on one second. What is it? Oh, Rhonda, I was just told I did not answer your question about what the line to gain is. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. So again, there's your 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 question, Austin. I hope that answers it. Okay. So Rhonda, what the line to gain is, is every time you get the football, you have to go 10 yards to get a first down so that you get a new set of downs. The line to gain is the is how far the ball has to go to get a first down. If you think in your mind that there's a pretend line that they have to go. And if they get to that line, that's called the line of gain. What do you gain? You gain a first down. So when you hear them say they're about two yards short of the line to gain, it means they have two yards to go to get a first down. I'm so sorry that I didn't answer that. Shame on me. All right. I'm sorry about that, Rhonda. Last one I want to do today. And uh, but I think this is, a, is is still a very a good one. Hondo, I want to be optimistic about the Raiders. I really appreciate that you have mentioned they could be like other teams and gone if signed and oversigned. I get all of that. But to me, what is a balance between excitement and understanding what the last 20 years were like? I am trying to be honest. I am trying to be a person who's doing this right, I'd appreciate your help. That is a great email. Now, first of all, let me get the name. That comes to us from Shane M. Shane. Oh, that's a good name. That's my son's name. Um, so let me just share this with you. And, and I think this is, is fair. Antonio Pierce said it best that his resume is on the field. I think everything that the Raiders have done so far this offseason, I know there's still some offers out there. I know they're not done in free agency. I know that. Has given you reasons for optimism. I think the Raiders, the way they finished last year, has given you reasons for faith. And I think... When you take both of those and mix them, you have hope. Now, I would say all of this signings and lack of and the discipline are terrific, but they have to win on the field. To me, the only thing 
that breeds success is wins and losses. Now, I want to put it into a little bit different perspective. If you're, and I know you're not, but if you were a Chiefs fan, they have shown you enough to trust everything that they do. So every year when you go into the season until this changes, man, you're jacked up through the roof. You should be. Andy Reid's the best coach in the NFL. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback. Your front office and, and ownership have been exemplary. If you're the Raiders, this is new. So I think you have every reason to be fired up about Antonio Pierce and what he did. When you look at no training camp, no OTAs, no mini camps, past the trade deadline, missing two key members of his staff and on a staff he didn't pick. That's a very big deal. Very big deal. Very, very big deal. And then if you look at Tom Telesco, he has shown some things that prior to Dave Ziegler, the Raiders didn't do. That should be encouraging to you. But I would say to you as a Raider fan, until they get to a place of consistency, and let's be honest, this is my fifth season, the biggest thing consistently about the Raiders have been a lack of consistency. So until they demonstrate consistency, then I think you have a right to be skeptical. I don't think you, I mean, you have a right to be whatever you want, but then I think, you know, being, Hey, this is great. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm liking it. I want to see it on the field that to me, that's totally germane. So I like that one. Got a couple more I'm going to do. Eight since I looked at the time, we're okay on the time. Just two more I want to do. This one comes to us, and this is from Matthew. And Matthew lives in Brooklyn, New York. Hondo, recently heard you out here um, on television talking about Carmen Brasillo and addressing um, some thoughts on him. Very excited about Carmen being here. Also want to tell you, I'm a big Raider fan. I've never lived outside of New York, but Al Davis was from here. So my two favorite teams have always been the Giants and the Raiders. <clears throat> I did not know about you till I heard you out here talking. Now I've gone back and listened to a bunch of podcasts. Really like your work. Thanks for everything you do. Quick question. Do you believe Antonio Pierce would have been a uh, giant had the Raiders not given him the head coaching job. Yes. Yep. 100% believe that. And and have reason to believe that, by the way. I mean, shame on the Giants that he's the coach of the Raiders. He should have been the Giants coach. Now, I'm glad because I get to cover him and I like him and I have a great relationship with him. But Antonio Pierce is a quintessential um. You know, you look up Raider and I mean Giant in the dictionary, you're going to see him. But he played for the Giants. He is a Raider. And there is a difference. So, yeah, thank you for that. I appreciate hearing from you, Matthew. And then the last one comes to us. Hondo, I'm really ticked off. And you may be the only one, Uncle Hondo, who can take me off the ledge. That's a high responsibility. Fields goes to Pittsburgh. Why didn't this deal get done here? Well, they had Gardner Minshew. And I think that there, there was still some potential interest. But when you look at Jay, J Justin, but when you look at him, he's got, he's got the fourth year left. And then you have, would have to pick up the fifth year option. You've got Gardner, Gardner with a very manageable contract. They can move on from him after year one. Um, I believe that the Bears could have gotten uh, at least what they got and probably more had they done the deal earlier. But that's why. And that makes sense to me. So there you go. All right. There are all of you, not all, but there's a bunch of your emails from today. I hope that you all appreciated that and enjoyed that. Again, we can't, I'm taping this very early in the morning. Can't confirm John Jenkins yet, but it did come from a very reputable source. So I believe it. Um, and, uh, but there are other offers out there. 
And so it wouldn't surprise me if the Raiders sign a couple people today. Wouldn't surprise me if they only if they didn't come to terms and some things play out. But either way, things are going along. Obviously, not as fast as fans want because they want unlimited money and multiple signings. And I understand that, but it is coming along from a very disciplined and place. Please remember to follow me on Instagram at Hondo SR on X, formerly known as Twitter at Hondo Carpenter. We appreciate all of you guys and I'm grateful for you. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.